Hello everyone, and today I'm going to be starting a new painting series themed around gemstones. Now my inspiration for this is a few paints that I own by Daniel Smith that are actually made from gemstones, like the pigments come from the gemstones. That is the Primatec line. I got convinced into buying these at an art store quite a while ago because I wanted to try some new things and one of the people working there recommended these to me and I gotta say they are incredible they're super beautiful and vibrant and I've wanted to do a series of paintings based off these for a while and it's been a little bit since I've sat down and done watercolor and so I thought this would be a great way to get back into things and the gemstone I'm going to start with is amethyst. So here is the tube of paint. Oh, let's see. Let's see if it'll focus on the paint and not me. So on the back here, I'll give a little bit of the pigment information. The pigment is genuine amethyst and it has a light fastness rating of one. And then it's got a general binder of gum arabic, which is a pretty common binder for most watercolor paints. Now, I also wanted to do a lot more planning for these paintings. And if you saw my goals video from before, you know that I actually want to sit down, think about the atmosphere, feeling, and really put more effort into planning my paintings. And I did just that. So I went into my sketchbook and I planned some things out. So I'll show a little bit of footage of this more up close, but in general, I kind of did some brainstorming. I thought of some different ideas. I also did some studies of gemstones just to get an idea of what it's like to actually draw them. And they're pretty basic. I just used some highlighters and some pens just to get an idea of those. And then I did a number of thumbnails. So I'll show again some more footage of the thumbnails. And I decided to make a reel and post this to Instagram and get some feedback. And so far it seems like people like the gothic window idea best. And so last night I sat down and I did a little more exploring and I did two more thumbnails. Actually, it was more than that, but I kind of destroyed them because I had some more ideas, but I did kind of do a slightly more ornate painting. And of course, this is not perfect. This is mostly just to get a concept down, but I really love the black background and I wanna see if I can kind of incorporate that more. I'm kind of torn between wanting to do an environment and then wanting to do a really detailed window. And I would also like to incorporate flowers, but I'm afraid it might be too busy. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go onto my iPad and kind of redo this. And then I'm going to try out some other concepts to see if I can add to it and really elevate it. For example, should there be a landscape behind the window as if you're peering out? Should there be flowers? So I'm going to at least create some base line work and then play around with the idea a little bit and show you some more here in a little bit. So I'm realizing I have a bit of a problem with perfectionism. So I've officially attempted the final painting of this three, no four, I'm on my fourth attempt now. And it's getting a little out of hand. My wrist hurts. I've definitely been overdoing it. And I just want this to be good. I've spent so much time trying to prepare this, but part of my issue with the last time 
was the colors. So it's not, it's not terrible, but this was my last attempt. And it's kind of giving Lisa Frank. Um, I do like how the gemstone turned out, but I'm realizing I do not like the yellow and I'm not a huge, I'm just not a huge hot pink person. So in previous versions of this, Again, I've done this three times now. First time, wrong paper. Second time, decided I hated it halfway through after doing some line work. But I kind of like the colors of this better. Now, I don't necessarily love the peachy orange, but I do like the slightly more muted color, even for like the trees. But I think I need to just fully lean into cool colors and mostly blues. So having a more anagal it this word, <laughs> um, I can't say the word, but basically a color scheme that all the colors are close to each other on the color wheel. So purples and blues, and honestly, I find purple a difficult color to work with. So I'm limiting myself. I cannot do this a fifth time. I am not allowed to. I'm gonna like absolutely be so upset with myself if I make myself trace the line work one more time. But I have line work prepared. But what I'm going to do is take it slow I'm not going to do all of this in one day. Lord knows I don't have the time today, but I'm going to do just a very light wash of color and I'm going to do the border. And what I've done for the past few for the border oh, is I've used acrylic ink and I really do like this brown color, sort of like a grayish brown, but I'm wondering if I should still go with that tone. So. What I'm gonna do is first just a light wash of colors, just blues and such. And then I'm going to maybe take a picture and mess around with some of the colors on my iPad. But I just, I can't do this again. <laughs> so I just need to fully prepare and accept that even if I get it to a state that I like it more, it's not gonna be perfect because while it's good to set a project in a goal like this, it's also, not great to dwell and give in to perfectionism. So let's get started on this final, final piece. <laughs> so starting out here, I did a little wash of color just to kind of establish the tones that I wanted. And I also added this border here. So you'll see I'm going to be skipping around quite a bit because this took a while and this video is already going to be a little long. But first here I decided to tackle one of the most difficult parts and that is the gemstone itself. So I decided to paint each little portion, each geometric portion, a kind of the same color and to sort of mirror it on each side. And that was sort of my process of completing the whole thing. Now, is this accurate for light reflection for gemstones in real life? Probably not, but it's meant to be a stained glass gemstone. So it's really not too big of a deal. Also, I do want to apologize a little for skipping around and for speeding up the process so much, but if I didn't do that, this video would be about three hours long, so hopefully you don't mind that. And if you have any other solutions that you'd like to see me try in the future, as far as the video editing process goes, please let me know in the comments below. Now back to the painting, I'm slowly starting to add darker squares in. Now later on in the painting, I think that perhaps I could have left 
some more lighter areas, but luckily that is something that I can always fix digitally down the line if I really feel like it's necessary. Again, at this point I just wanted to finish the painting and I didn't want to get too carried away in perfectionism. That being said though, this was one of the most satisfying parts. I feel like adding those darker bits in just really helped kind of solidify the shape and helps you kind of understand a little more what I'm actually painting here. decided to add in a little bit of line work. So I actually used that amethyst paint because it's quite dark and it's a little less purple than you'd think. It leans a little bit closer to black, but that actually makes it great for line work. And so I used that to line these kind of thicker outlines to give the gemstone more of a stained glass look. This was something I was hesitant to do because both in the kind of experimentation I did before, as well as the previous paintings, I really liked the gemstone before this, but I was trying to kind of lean into the bit, I guess you could say. And I think that it was a good choice. And something else that's pretty neat about this paint is that it's very reflective. It's difficult to see in the video itself, but the amethyst paint is actually a little bit shimmery because it has actual granules of the gemstone in it. So in real life, it actually holds more dimension than I can show over the screen.
Now, after completing the gemstone, I was a little bit more lost as far as how I wanted to complete the rest of the painting. Luckily, I had an idea as far as what colors I wanted to use, but I didn't know how I wanted to go about the shading because I didn't fully know how to paint stained glass. And while I did look at a lot of references, I knew that it wasn't really going to look like what I was aiming for until I add more line work near the end. But here I'm just slowly building up the little details and trying to take my time. And not gonna lie, my wrist was hurting pretty bad here. This entire painting, especially the fact that I did the line work, three separate times, which doesn't sound like it should be so bad, but let me tell you, the line work for the gemstone, doing that four times within a few days, really is not kind to the joints. But I think it kind of triggered some sort of like tendonitis. Um, so I've actually been having to wear my wrist in a bit of a brace this week to kind of recover. So if anything, I definitely learned that my perfectionism definitely needs to tone it down. <laughs> but here you're going to see I'm adding some more color. And while I did say I don't love hot pink, I did water down that same color to get a cooler pink tone since I was trying to lean more into cool tones. With that being said, though, I definitely felt out of my comfort zone for the colors I used in this piece. And I feel like that definitely gave me a little bit of an added challenge. I definitely think I'm someone who prefers warmer tones and oranges and pinks and reds and greens. So this was definitely a little more challenging for me. However, I did enjoy getting to use some paints that I don't always get to use. Also realizing as an adult that uh, painting within the lines is quite difficult. I really wish I could have used masking fluid here and unfortunately the masking fluid I have does not work well with this paper. If I use masking fluid and try to later remove it, it ends up ripping the paper pretty, poor, uh, pretty badly. So it was not worth it, so I just had to use a little extra patience and just really try to paint around things the best that I could. I also had a little bit of a struggle figuring out the values for the trees. I didn't quite know how dark I wanted to make things, especially since I planned on later trying to have sort of a glass cutout effect within the trees. So that was something that definitely stumped me just a little bit. So it kind of makes sense that this piece was such a challenge for me. I haven't been doing a whole lot of traditional art lately and I was quite rusty and I think that's a pretty big reason why I had to redo this so many times. That and because I was impatient and a little impulsive. However, those things I don't actually consider to be negatives and that is because I actually learned quite a bit in the pieces that failed. Unfortunately, that has been a big way that I've learned lessons in the past year. A lot of the paintings that I've done, I've had to do more than once. And while I do enjoy learning, it's definitely not the most fun. It takes a lot of time and it also uses up more supplies. But 
it also is sort of a way for me to test things out. It's also a reason why digital art is both a little easier, but also in some ways more time consuming. I find that when I do digital work, I redo things even more because it's so easy to use the undo button. So I think that going back and doing more traditional work will hopefully help me a little bit with my confidence and also in accepting more mistakes. I've noticed that as my skills have improved, my expectations have also lifted in the sense that they've gotten higher and harder to meet and that I have a hard time being proud of myself and what I create because I'm always expecting more and more of myself. And that gets to become even more difficult when you add in social media and Pinterest and all of these other places that we see amazing artwork. It can be really hard not to compare yourself and your skill level. So this is where I bring in my secret weapon, and that is colored pencils. So I find that they're so useful in adding extra dimension into pieces. It was also here that I added a little bit of line work. This was not the final time I did this, but adding that little bit of definition helped me plan out the rest of the piece just a little bit more. But I use them a lot, especially near the gemstone to add just little bits of dimension, especially since some of those little shapes are so small that when I was painting them, I wasn't able to give quite the amount of color and value dimension as I would have liked. Take a shot every time I say dimension. I just can't think of a better word. Now, because I was painting stained glass, I also didn't know how to go about using different hues of colors within the different parts of the painting, but I tried to use a little bit just to tie it together a bit more. this point of the painting, I'm adding mostly just small little details. I'm adding little adjustments to the colors, trying to add a little bit more depth, and also just adding a little more shading that I can later turn into different compartments of glass. It's also around this point that I probably overworked the paper a little bit. 
I used a good paper, but I also did a lot of layers and I also used a lot of water. Despite that though, it held up pretty well and did not warp at all. So that's a positive. Looking back a little bit, I also kind of wish I'd planned out the kind of cutouts in the tree just a little bit better. I think I could have utilized that part of the painting a little more, but it is done now and there's not much I can do about it, but it is a lesson I want to take with me in the future. With that being said, I'm mostly rambling now, so I'm going to let you kind of see some of these final details I add to really boost the contrast and also little pieces of the line work. Now I didn't include a lot of footage of the line work because my head was blocking the camera and sometimes you just have to have your eyes about three inches away in order to do good line art. But I'm going to let you watch the rest of the process and I will join you again at the end to discuss my thoughts.
And it's finally finished. This took me way too long, mostly just because I decided to redo it four times, but I'm really happy with how the final product turned out. While there are a few things that I would change and maybe a few little edits I might make in post, I think it turned out pretty well. I'm definitely happy that I leaned into these cooler tones and even that I added darker backgrounds. I didn't think I'd want to use dark line work, but I think wanting to lean into that stained glass look that it really helped it capture that. Now there are some lines and details that I didn't outline in black because I wasn't sure how it would look. So maybe later I'll take this and digitally alter a few things if I do decide to go ahead and make prints of it, but all in all I'm happy that I'm finally finished with it and I'm willing to accept it even though it may not be perfect. And with that, thanks for coming along with me through this journey, and I hope to see you all next time.